Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in to Winning Cures Everything, and it is uh, my Tuesday solo show, but not rolling solo still. Last of the trifecta of our friends from Westlot Pirates, I've got Eric Scuzz Scousebo um, in with us today. He is the resident Vikings fan from Northwestern. Their podcast is uh, Westlot Pirates. You can find them there. You can follow them on Twitter at Westlot Pirates. Eric, how you doing, bud? I'm awesome, Chris. I'm stoked to be here. Yeah, man. I'm excited to do this. We're going to jump into it. I'm not going to not gonna make you sit through me reading off a bunch of stuff. Everybody knows where to find us, and they know who we work for. So, uh, so let's get into it. We are going to hit the draft like I've done with Sam, like I've done with John. We're going to hit the draft, you and me. We're going to tackle it a little differently, as we have for all of the other guys. Mm-hmm. I like to personally – Thursday night, we're going to leave this draft. And then Friday night, we're going to leave the draft. And then over the weekend, we're going to leave the draft. And and people are going to say, this team won. This team lost. Uh, These guys are going to be stars. These guys are going to be bust. And and we're all going to have it all figured out. But really, we're not going to know anything. Mm -mm. I like to look backwards. I like to go three years back. I like to go five years back. And I like to see who is is around who is available who is the star who is a bust who are there still question marks on and, and we're trying to figure these things out so i want to do that today three years ago the 2018 draft occurred on that thursday night and we have one of the most ironic similarities to this year <laughs> never have i remembered a draft where five quarterbacks got taken in the first round this year we are all assuming five quarterbacks are gonna be taken in the first round Yep. What did you think of the five quarterbacks, a start there, that got taken? We're talking Baker, Darnold, Josh Allen, Josh Rosen, and Lamar Jackson. Where do we stand on those five guys? Uh, well, if I were drafting in 2018, I would have drafted Lamar Jackson number one overall. Yes, sir. And if Maybe I were drafting – page for that. And if I were redoing the 2018 draft, I would still draft Lamar Jackson number one overall. But I think – um, I guess, you know, it'll be interesting to compare our, our grading scales here. So I, I think I was probably pretty liberal in, in you know, we, we, we rated everybody as bust star or question, question mark, mark, right? Yep. And for me, now at the top of the draft, it's not, you need a little bit more than this. But for me, once you get past pick 10 or so, if you've got a guy that's a perennial starter for your team, he's starting 14, 15, 16 games a year. He's covering what 50 plus percentage of snaps uh, in those games. That feels like you succeeded on your number one draft. Wow. Uh, even pick. if he's terrible. Well, if he's terrible, would he still be starting there for yes, three years? Yes. Right. Sam, okay, okay. So I'm guessing we're assuming I'm, I think we're talking about Sam Darnold here, right? No, no, no. Sam Darnold is definitely not a star in my opinion, oh, but um, okay. All right. Okay. So, wow. But, but, I was, I was like to say, okay. So, so what are we talking about? I'm ready. Let me just jump in. So I had, I had Baker as a star. Wow. Okay. So I actually have Baker as a question mark. Still. Is he a question mark to you? Okay. And I, here's the reason why he's, he's played three years. Mm-hmm. One year he looked like he had flashes, but he was a rookie. But so he had a lot of mistakes year two. I understand Freddie kitchens is the worst single head coach in the history of, of the NFL. And nobody can argue that if you do, you're just wrong. Um, but, Baker still made a lot of mistakes that Baker made. Last year, Stavansky comes in, and Baker looked unbelievably better at the end of the year than he did at the beginning of the year. the beginning of the year, he still did a lot of Baker things. If Stavansky is coaching those things out of him, then then I am going to be thrilled. I'm going to be happy. I've, I've always supported him. I don't hate him. He's my guy. But I, I'm not claiming him a star yet, Okay. Now that, 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 that helps, that helps calibrate. So I, I'm, I'm with you there. Cause I don't think I'm a pretty harsh grader though. I'm also, I, yeah. I, I, it, well, and you're a Cleveland fan too. So that like colors this particular pick we're starting <laughs> a little bit. with a little bit. Right. A little bit. Um, so I like to me, Mayfield is unquestionably the starter. He's had a lot of no success doubt. going to the playoffs. Um, he is, you know, for, for in, all intents and purposes of like stardom, right? He's got probably more commercials than anybody right now. Yeah, I mean, he's got the commercial, <laughs> but he had the commercials even when he was awful. 
Yeah. And, and what, and what's interesting, especially about comparing 2018 and 2016, you know, having, having gone through these, like 2016 guys, their rookie deals are up, right? They're done. So you've got, and, hang on. And neither one of them finished the rookie deal with their team. Yep. Yep. They which is both let go, which is fascinating. And that, so that's, that's an interesting question to me about Baker. Like if, Let's say last year is what you get for Baker in 2021 and in 2022. I don't think Cleveland should offer him the Jared Goff deal, no. but could they conceivably continue to compete with him on a reasonable contract? Yeah. I think yes. And that feels like that to me feels like success. If, if five years down your I QB agree. is still your QB. No, no, I'm I think it's a hundred percent success star. I guess, I guess I'm pretty, yeah. pretty liberal with the term burst bust. And I'm, I'm pretty tight with the term star. Fair. I'll call anybody an idiot. I, I, I reserve genius for very select few <laughs> people in the world. Um, it, it I, strange, I'm, I'm cool calling him a question mark. That's, that's good. That's good with me. Yeah, I think would he's, you, I definitely don't think, he, well, he's a hundred percent, not a bust. I mean, he would almost have to be injured to yeah. be a bust or just yeah. quit. Um, where at this point he won the first playoff game in Cleveland history. But once again, I'm wrapping some of this around the fact that that team was loaded last. Like, mm-hmm. look, like if, if we dropped him in the jets offense, what does he look like? Is he Baker mm-hmm. Mayfield? It's impossible to grade and it's not his fault. We can't do that. And I'm not crapping on him. You brought up the contract. He is, he did get his fifth year option picked up, which is smart. They got to do that. No doubt. My issue is, all of these quarterbacks every year that the next quarterback to get paid is the next highest paid quarterback. Mm-hmm. Why does it have to be that? We know that he's not the best quarterback in the NFL. We definitively know that. So what is wrong with taking a $24 million deal? Like, why do you have to make 35? Why do you have to make 40? Why can't you take a mid-level deal? And, 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 and cause that's where you are. If you're mm-hmm. the, 13th best quarterback or the ninth best quarterback. Why can't you just be paid like the ninth? I think it'll be really interesting how that changes over the next two seasons. And I mean, you look at golf, you look at Wentz, both busts maybe. I mean, I know we're yeah, not no, there I'm, yet, so but yeah, but yeah, no, they but, both but, got grossly overpaid way yes. too quickly, and, way and, too quickly. And, and whether or not that was the, the thing that, that broke Jared Goff or, or whatever dalliance he had with, uh, with Sean McVay's girlfriend, I don't know. But um, the, the point being, this class in 2016 is going to get evaluated differently, I would think, yeah. especially because now finding a pro-ready QB coming out of college appears – I shouldn't say it's easy, but it appears to be more doable. You look at Burrow last year. I kind of think at- it is easy. And, and, and I mean, I, I know that sounds insane, but the, the bus rate is basically 50-50, maybe even a little like 30-30, uh, like 30-70 mm-hmm. um, in, in that situation. I think guys are going to be more pro-ready because the college offense is different. And, hell, they're even more college. The reason they're better in college is because they're starting as freshmen and they're getting Mm -hmm. three or four full seasons in because the high school level of football at the quarterback level is so much better. And they're not sitting for two years and then playing for a year and a half or two years and then going to the pros and they still have a lot of learning to do. I think most of these guys come in, they they – they're ready. They're they're ready yeah. to go, and there's no reason to wait for them. When you're seeing some of the scheme concepts dovetail too, right? Like the idea of a of a QB that spent all their time in in shotgun in that's college right. is not like a an untouchable situation now for NFL teams. Yeah, right? NFL teams used to be terrified of that, and now Tom Brady does not go under center at all anymore, and he's Tom Brady. Yep. Like like the offense has just changed. Like, hey, oh wow, it's easier to see the defense if I'm five yards back. Like I can see everything better. So, so, okay. So that's Baker. Let's, can let's ask move. a specific, can I ask ahead, one more specific away. question about Baker. And this is like a good transition to, to Josh Allen, who I think is the next good, good one to talk about next. If Baker was drafted at seven instead of one, would you have a different barometer for measuring? No. So your, your, your perception of the top 10, as opposed to the rest of the first round is tough to me. I think if you're taking in the first round, you're expected to start and play by year All two right. and All be right. there. Like I, like, like if you're taking 11th or 12th or 15th or 23rd, like that's a, that's an NFL starter, maybe not rookie year, mm-hmm. but you damn well better be there by the end of the year. Because that's the first pick. That's a blue chip talent that his team has taken, and only ten teams get in the top ten. But we see great talent just go all over the place all the time. Mm-hmm. I 
I think my expectation is any of the first round guys, I judge them harshly. I, I expect you to be a starter and be a starter very quickly. So, but no, Baker, if Baker would have went seventh, if Baker, if they would have traded back and Baker would have went 19th, it, it wouldn't have mattered to me. His, gotcha. his expectation no. is the same. You're the quarterback. You were taken in the first round. You were taken, well, maybe not in the seventh because they had two picks that year. They also took Denzel Ward. If, if they take, if he's the second player they took, maybe I see him mm-hmm. a little differently because technically he's not their first pick. He was just a first round pick. But I don't, I still wouldn't judge it too much differently. Gotcha. So, um, all right. So you, let's go to Josh Allen. Josh Allen's, yeah. Josh Allen's uh, uh, an interesting guy because I liked him. And then I bought into all of the negative propaganda that spewed my mind. And you guys and Gary were, were, were very influential on me, like turning my back and going heel yeah. completely on Josh Allen. I feel foolish now. Uh, I think he has to be a star, right? Yep. Yep. I agree. We were, agree. we were just wrong. And, yeah. and, uh, well, well, very he's, interesting. he's bucked. So I'm a, I'm a data guy, right? I'm yes. an analytics guy that's by that's my career. It's like what I love. Um, he bucked every analytic trend that you would expect, like yes. like QBs that are inaccurate in college that just doesn't change in the NFL, right. except for Josh Allen. And now what's, what's fascinating to me is you're starting to hear a lot of, oh, he could be the next Josh Allen kind of conversation, especially around like Trey Lance that's right. and some others. And my thought is, well, hold on, Josh Allen. Josh Allen might be a unicorn. Can yes. we really bank on other guys being just like him? But but he's like to his credit, he came into the league. He was coachable. They've he also landed in a situation that has figured out how to mold their offense around him, as opposed to the opposite, which could be a could, could be a Sam Darnold thing. But I, um, I but he's a bona fide star to me. So I now I no. now think that is a trend in the NFL. I think these front offices. These coaches, the offensive minds, are so much better than they've ever been, ever. And and they are taking guys that are just rando dudes off the street that no, or that were proven bust at other positions or other locations. And they're saying, no, this guy's fine. You just didn't use him right, and I'm going to see what he does well, and I'm going to build around it. Ryan Tannehill is – one of the ultimate, you know, what in the hell happened here? <laughs> yeah, you know, in in Miami under Adam Gase, that's that's the that's the the, the low hanging fruit joke there. Um, he looked worthless. Like, why did Tennessee go out and get this guy at all? Like, why waste a roster spot for him? There had to be somebody better than him. And and no, uh, uh, Arthur Smith just comes in and says, I, I I can figure this guy out. He's got some traits. He's good at some things. Let's let's do what he's good at. Let's build the team around the things that he can do well. And all of a sudden, it's one of the best offenses in the NFL, and Ryan Tannehill's getting this huge contract and making great. I think you're, the things about Josh Allen were accurate that you guys said about his accuracy. I think mm-hmm. I don't think you were wrong on that. I still think he's not really accurate. I just think – the things that he is good at, that's just what they do. Yeah. Yeah. I, the, you know, the other interesting piece about him is, you know, coming from Wyoming, not playing a tough schedule, not looking particularly good in his last year. Yep. Um, I have, uh, I and a lot of other Northwestern fans have personal experience with the 2004 version of Ben Roethlisberger, who literally lit the college teams he played on fire. Um, regardless that he was at Miami of Ohio and they weren't, you know, a powerhouse team beyond him. Um, it, it is hard for me to look at a player playing at Wyoming and, and, and not seeing him destroying the opposition. Um, now I, you know, interestingly, Justin Herbert is, you know, had some similar stuff coming out last year. He just didn't look that good in college. Well, maybe that was more about the coach and the schemes. Oh, like man. I realize there's I have, so many variables. Listen, Gary, Gary is the biggest Mario Cristobal fan in the world. <laughs> and I have, I, I do not, missed the opportunity to let him know their offense was so bad. Everybody in the world thought Justin Herbert could not play football because of what they did at Oregon. Chip Kelly's got to be throwing up right now. He's like, God, if I could have had a guy like him when I was at Oregon, we would have definitely won. Look at what this kid can do. And, and it's not like he's – listen – it is not like the Chargers have like the innovation of offense. This mm-hmm. is not Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay, you know, Arthur Smith, you know, Greg Roman guys. All right. They're not this is not Andy Reid, you know, wheeling and dealing. This is I think their OC last year was like some twenty four year old kid. Like, what are you doing? 
what are we doing? <laughs> so uh, anyway, yeah. uh, yeah, pretty, pretty interesting. I, I, Josh Allen does a lot of things. Well, I do think the Trey Lance, the comparison is there because all the negatives are the exact same. Mm-hmm. And that's why mm-hmm. we compare them. Very few of the positives are the same. I think that's Josh fair. Allen's a good athlete, but I think Josh Allen is not close to the athlete. Trey Lance is, I yeah. think Josh yeah. Allen can run, but he can't run as fast as Trey Lance. Mm-hmm. They're built a little similar. So I guess that helps too. Um, I guess it's more the idea of like the project, right? That's going to come into the NFL and, you know, look different or better than college. And he certainly could. I just, I personally think that Josh Allen is going to, is going to cause some teams to make choices down the road. Maybe not this year, but in future years that they will three to five years later regret. That's right. Well, and it all depends. Okay. It all depends. So if he goes to like, let's, I mean, there's been a whole lot of buzz recently that the 49ers moved up for him. Like he's who they're mm-hmm. going to take in third. If, if he goes to Kyle Shanahan, I'm going to assume he's going to be a star next year. Maybe not next year. Sorry, not this coming year, the following year. Give him one year under Kyle. And I think he's yep. going to be amazing because I trust Kyle. If he goes to the Broncos, Sam's team, they have showed me nothing that their <laughs> offensive coordinator and the offensive mindset in Denver mm-hmm. can do anything. And so I'm not going to judge it the same. You know what I'm saying? Like, I I think where you land and if you go to a competent place says more about, you know, your, if Mac Jones goes to Kyle Shanahan, if that is the move, I'm going to hate the move. But I'm going to look like I'm an idiot because he's going to work. Because yeah. we've seen Nick Mullins worked like, <laughs> yeah. like these other guys were, and people say, well, look at their record. He didn't win. No, he put up offensive points and he did things with a team that had no talent because they literally lost over a hundred million dollars in injuries. Okay. A mm-hmm. hundred million dollar of their roster last year did not play. I was saying, so you can't look at just the wins and losses. You got to look at the competency of the people that were running that offense and he can make anybody look competent. And that's why whoever he takes, it's going to work. But that doesn't need yeah. to be the de facto, def- like the definite fi- defining moment of was it right or not. So, all right, where do you want to go I'm next? You, you want to go uh, Sam Darnold? Yeah, let's talk Darnold because I feel like, like I'm guessing you have him as a bust. I have him as a bust. Yeah. I, I, I can only judge what I've seen. And I've been very open about the fact that there is a world where he's still really bad. Like – Joe Brady can't just <laughs> fix him. And oh, Adam strength. Gase wasn't all of his problems because, A, Adam Gase wasn't his only coach. And and he's just not very good. Yeah, I I am I am somewhat open to the to the the comments that I've heard bouncing around the NFL sphere this this last week around the fit for him in Carolina could be really good from like a scheme standpoint and that that like but to your point, at best, he's a question mark. He's, yep. he's been so bad. I mean, he's been like the 31st or 32nd worst QB in the NFL. I don't know how that's not a bust. Yep. after. No, hang years. on. The only quarterback that has 500 passes that is statistically worse than him is Josh Rosen. And Yikes. I couldn't believe Josh Rosen had 500 passes. <laughs> you and me both. Like that, so I was like, no, that can't be. He doesn't. Like there has to be a threshold. Oh, the threshold's 500 passes. And Josh is barely at it, and he's got it. Here's my thing. If Sam Darnold looks – how good does he have to be in this new offense this year to for us to take him out of the bus category with this how bad as he's been? That's something I've got to figure out. But also this, enjoy this one year under Joe Brady, okay? Because if Joe Brady fixes Sam Darnold, yeah, isn't that true? <laughs> Joe Brady will be on the first thing smoking to Cincinnati, and they are going to take Zach Taylor and hurl him out a window and into the river. Hurl. He, is, know, he is going to be launched from a ship. Depends how good Cincinnati is this year. No, it doesn't. I, yeah, no, it doesn't. I'm, I'm no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Zach Taylor is not a good football coach. Dak Taylor literally was friends with Sean McVay, and that's how he got his job. Yeah, and true, we have to stop true. doing that. If Joe Brady fixes Sam Darnold, a guy who once saw Ghost I, on a field, not not like in a haunted house, like while playing football, I, I think Joe Brady is on his way to Cincinnati, and I don't think Burrow stops until he gets there. 
Oh man, Cincinnati Bengals, LSU North. I know, I know. I'm kind of, I'm kind of in love with it. It's weird that I was a Browns fan. I always hated the Steelers and the Ravens. I've never once had hatred for the Bengals because I kind of saw them as the same. It's like it. I grew up in a house where I get a little personal. Like my dad was pretty like destructive person, but like if he beat on you and your brother, like you, there's nothing he could do to make you hate your brother. Because you're both in this shitty situation, right? I Like, I always saw the Bengals as that. I kind of would love to see both of us kind of rise up and the other two just sit in the back seat for a while. The problem is, is I love Lamar Jackson. I got a lot of stock invested yeah. in Lamar being good. And then if that happens, the the internet is not going to be kind to Lamar. So yeah, I, don't, I don't know how to make that work to where I'm all happy. But it definitely means the Steelers are like DFL for a long time. I, I can I can sign up for that. So, um, and s- similarly, being a Vikings fan, I have a lot of dislike for uh, for Green Bay and Chicago. Yeah, uh, dislike is a is a um, and it's hard to hate moderate the Lions, word. Right? Like uh, yeah, like who like cares? you want to beat them, but you don't hate them. No, yeah. those, those, they've been through too much. They've That's been right. through too much. Um, you want to talk about Lamar next? Or you want, let's, or, let's I mean, Josh Lamar, Roshan is just big, like. He's the big star to me. He's the big yeah. star. And the last guy is is an, I mean, almost an also ran. But Yeah, agreed. I mean, Lamar is incredible. Yes. Like, there's there's no there's no bones about it. And people, you know, like to crap on his record in the, in the playoffs, you know. To, um, uh, go look at Aaron Rodgers' record in the playoffs outside of the year he won the Super Bowl because he got four wins from that one. And then almost every other year, he's one and done, one and done, one and done. Wins a game, loses the next one, one and done. Yeah. Yep. yep. Not Mark- a lot of people have a good resume in the playoffs, by the way. One Thomas Brady. That's the list of <laughs> that's, people that's about who have it. a yeah. really good record in the playoffs. How many games did Peyton Manning lose in the playoffs? Ton. Tons, right? Ton, yeah. yes. So, and Philip like, Rivers, Philip Rivers, I swear to God, I was the Philip Rivers apologist forever. He just happened to play during an era at the same time as Tom and Peyton. He never lost a playoff game to anybody who wasn't named Tom Brady or Peyton Manning. And that just sucks. That's crazy. Like, that's like, I'm the third best quarterback here, but Eli's got two Super Bowls. Ben Roethlisberger yeah. got two Super Bowls. I'm better than both of them. But damn it, I got to play these other guys. And if I beat one, I lose to the other one. I got to get through both of them. So I'm curious. Do you remember the QB, the next QB off the board after Lamar Jackson in that 2018 draft? Oh, my God. No, I don't. I don't. It was in the third round. It was Mason Rudolph. Oh, that's awesome. The the, the cliff is incredible, yes. right? Uh, like, and, and so, you know, Rosen, Darnold, Buss, but. Alan Baker Jackson, and then you dropped to Mason Rudolph, Mason Rudolph. Kyle Laletta, yes, uh, Mike wow. White, Luke it's, Falk, and Tanner Lee. Holy it's moly! Pretty ugly, doesn't it? Really ugly. So not a Dak Prescott kind of world where mm-hmm. you can find you know uh, a diamond in the, in the in the haystack, right? Yep. Wow, yep. that's that's pretty amazing. I love Lamar. I still defend Lamar. And, you know the people who argue. Well, the only reason he's successful is because Greg Roman has built that offense completely around him. Yeah, what the hell do you think everybody else is doing around their quarterback? Like, do you think Kirk Cousins is really the best quarterback in the world? Or do they just surround him with unbelievable offensive talent? Look at Tampa. I mean, look yes. at what they did for my, Tom Brady. My guy, Tom Brady. They brought Tom in. They brought Gronk back. They they went out and was like, "We're gonna, we're gonna get more. We're gonna get Leonard Fournette too, and then we're gonna then we're gonna get more. And we're gonna go get Antonio Brown. Like we're just gonna keep giving you guys." Look at Pat Mahomes. I mean, yes. they've surrounded him with tons of talent, and they're so, gonna continue to do it. So that's the that's the Bizarro world. An, an old school Superman recipe, uh, mm-hmm. like throwback. If anybody knows what that is. I would love to see a world where Sam Darnold got drafted by Andy Reid and mm. where where um, Mahomes got drafted to Adam Gase. Like, like I think Mahomes Ooh. would be way better than Sam Darnold. Let's, let's be clear. I think he would have been way better than Sam with the Jets. Mm-hmm. The problem is, is he, he's not – I don't – there may be wild card team every now and then – they're, they're, they're still barely a 500 football team struggling to keep up because the rest of the team is just not very good. Okay. Yep. Andy Reid gets Sam Darnold. I don't know that he has Lombardi. 
but I absolutely think they continue to make the playoffs every year. They might not win the division, but they're in the playoff hunt and they make the playoffs every year. They're, it's they're a really a good call. Game. That's the bizarro world I wish we could see. I wish I could turn back time and make these things happen. I know they didn't go in the same draft, but like this is one guy got taken and he's just he's he, in my eyes the bust. The next guy got taken and we call him after three or four years the greatest. We put him in the same conversation of Tom Brady, and I just think this guy's this guy's got six, seven Super Bowls. Like what are we doing? Really, this dude's got one, and everybody just assumes well he'll get another one next year, and the year after, and the year after. Nobody's ever done that. Peyton Manning didn't do that. John Elway didn't do that. Nobody's ever done that. Yeah, J- Jordan, LeBron, and Brady. Yeah, Tiger Woods, Serena Williams. The, I mean these these people are on another level, and yeah. and like it, tr- trying to continue to anoint the next one every time a. Young star comes in. Yes, it's totally foolish. I don't think Adam Gaze deserves even like the mental thought process of what of of getting to play with with Patrick. Pat Mahomes. Um, but it, it, your point about Darnold is really interesting because I like he was. I what think he was if considered. Gets him? What happens if Andy gets yeah. him? What happens if McVay gets him? Like and one he of was considered the most teams. solid. Yeah, the most solid prospect that year, right? Like, yes. No, everyone thought he was going to be the number one pick to Cleveland. Yeah, it was Sion lowest Silver, floor. He was supposed to be the best guy. Now, I actually want to take a little bit of a victory lap. I believe. So you say you can't get more accurate. I think you can practice anything and get better at it. I think guys that turn the football over in college. Well, all interceptions are always going to be a thing for guys. Mm. If you turn the football, if you're careless with the football, because that's a mentality thing. That's not a practice thing. That's a that's a I'm I I believe in my talent, and my skills. That's a I think I can will this thing to happen instead of actually working to make it happen. Okay, he turned the football over a lot at USC, and I I've never seen a guy come into the NFL. I haven't really seen guys who are inaccurate get more accurate. I just believe that's something you could practice. I'm awful at golf, but if I did it for 20 to 40 hours a week, I would I would just get better. Okay? You'd be less awful. Yeah, I would be. <laughs> and at some point in time, I would get to the point of good, though. Like, I would figure out a way to get accurate. I think you can coach and teach accuracy. Mm-hmm. I, I do not think that you can coach and teach in, in, in interceptions out of people. I just don't. And that's why I was super – when when the Browns took Baker, I was shocked, but I was also very relieved, not that I was sold on Baker, but I was very relieved that it wasn't Sam because I believe this guy's just always going to – I think Joe Brady can fix a lot of his problems. I still think he's going to turn the ball over a lot because that's what he's done his whole life. Mm. So that's him. Yeah. Josh Rosen. So the most interesting thing about Josh Rosen is, is Josh Rosen tried to beat the drum of he got knocked for not caring about football enough. Okay. And I have interest outside of football and he kind of looked like, man, maybe you should have cared about football a little more. <laughs> I I have no idea what actually happened to him in Arizona. Um, it I like it didn't seem like a good fit at the time. They obviously like the next year were like, nope, you're out. Well, Kyler Murray. But they also they were also tanking that year, mm-hmm. and because because he got caught in the path the wrath of Steve Wilkes as well, who I think is a very yeah. good defensive mind. I love Wilkes. I think he should get another shot at head coaching someday because he he got asked to go to an organization that was tanking. And then he got one year to tank, and then they were like, oh, yeah, we're going to fire you now. Like, wait a minute. I, you wanted us to lose. We lost. I did exactly what you asked us to do. What? How are, we, how are you holding me accountable for this? I think he got a complete and utter raw deal. The downside is, is he's a defensive guy, and defensive guys just – you got to be worlds better than everybody else to get a shot in the NFL. And I understand the reason behind it. It's not that defense is more important than offense. It's nobody is hiring away your defensive coordinator, be their head coach. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, if Arthur Smith had two good years of being an OC and he got, he got ripped away and Tennessee is now back to the drawing board with their offense. And that's a, you, you built an offense around a quarterback and now the person that built the offense is gone. Okay. You, you, it's easier to, to lose your DC 
even though the great ones mm-hmm. are always hard to replace, than it is to lose the person that built your offense. If your play caller and the architect of your offense is your head coach, we just don't see head coaches leave for other head coaching jobs while they're uh-huh. under contract. You know, it just doesn't happen. Unless something goes really horribly well, wrong. Well, yeah, but then they get fired. Like, they, <laughs> yeah, like, like yeah. that's a different situation. Like, a lot of people get fired and they get another job. Did Harbaugh get fired by the Niners, or did he no, just he straight quit. up no, leave? No, his, con- his contract ran out. Oh, his contract was now up they Now, hang on. But they weren't going to renew him. No. Because, and, and the owner was, I've heard this argument all the time, he was not a very nice person to be around. He did not say good morning to me when he came into the office. Like... <laughs> Dude, you hired me to coach football. I'm kind of an asshole, all right? But I'm really good at this thing. I I hate I I hate the corporate world um objective and goal setting, but it seems like maybe the NFL should do more of that cuz they seem to like like Steve Wilkes, your number one objective was to get the top pick, yes. uh, right? If so. you were if you were in a if you owned a business and the in the in the bulk was Hey, we want to break this business up, but right now it's worth too much. So we kind of need to tank the stock. And you drop the stock by 30% in your year. And then somebody walked into a boardroom like, you dropped the stock 30%. You're fired. Like, (laughs) hang on. Didn't we have a conversation 12 months ago about this? Like, what the hell, man? Now, the only thing I can think of is if Steve Wilkes was beating the table saying, Josh Rosen's my guy, Josh Rosen's my guy, Josh Rosen's my guy. Then, then that's a different conversation. I have a hard time believing a defensive minded coach did that, though. Yeah. So, I, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of surprised that he fizzled out so fast. Like, like, yeah, there wasn't even like a journeyman opportunity, and maybe that goes to his mindset. Maybe that, maybe the criticism was well, correct, and he wasn't so committed. He's owned the practice squad in Tampa Bay behind Tom and <laughs> Blank. Blank Gavard now has a Super Bowl ring. Can you believe that? Anyway, uh, we have we have spent almost forty minutes. I have no idea how much time it is. Gary says he watches the clock, but I don't. I don't know. Anyway, um, <laughs> on quarterbacks, let's roll through some of these other guys. Okay, yeah. yeah. Tell me, tell me a couple of busts that you got from the 2018 and then we'll progressively get better from there. So, if you um, say a guy I did, then I'll tell you where I have him at. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I so had, I had most, start. I had mostly stars through the rest of the top 10 McGlinchey. I had as a question mark, just cause like, I don't know, you picked a, you picked a tackle at number nine and he's started for you, but yeah, he's not great. He's, he's not, not great. great. Um, so I think this is one of the better drafts for the first round talent. Yes. So yes. so my list of busts, I have four busts, okay? And I told you I'm a pretty I'm, – I'm actually pretty loose. One of these busts, you're going to be like, holy shit, you got this guy's a bust? Absolutely. I think I have eight. Bust? <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I didn't dra- – no, I didn't go through all 32. Like, if I didn't uh, know gotcha. your name or if you played yeah, offensive okay. line, like, I don't care. Like, I'm not worried about you. Mm-hmm. Because you could be a bust, but the offensive line still be really good. Okay? Sure. Like, the, like the, the, the offensive lineman that the uh, – the Patriots picked. Ah, crap. Yeah, win. Forgot his name. Like, that guy's a bust, but, like, that offensive line was still the best offensive mm-hmm. line in football mm-hmm. that year. Like, they won a and, Super Bowl. It's all right. And he got injured, you know? Like, it didn't matter. You know, right? Sliding so, doors moment, he might have been fine. So, so some who, of these who guys are you for? Did, here's my bust, okay? I got Sam Darnold. I got Josh Rosen. Rashad Penny, 100% of bust. This is why you don't take running backs in the first round. They've got a running I mean, back that was a seventh round pick that's been their starter for the last five or six years in Chris Carson. And Rashad Penny cannot stay on the field. And when he's on the field, he's not a difference maker at all. I'm pr- pretty, pretty sure that Thursday night in 2018, we all kind of knew that that was um, yeah, not we, a great pick, too. Was right? it, hang on. Was it like everybody said this was the first time I've ever heard this, and now I kind of hear it all the time? He was like a bowling ball of knives. It wasn't that like the the way that they described what? his running style. I, I think I heard either somebody on one of the ESPN or NFL Network shows like that was like they described him. The other guys are running back as well. He's one of my running backs, Sony Michelle. What, what yep. Bill? What are you doing? Yep. What are you doing? Bust. We got nineteen running backs on the damn roster. We had no mm-hmm. wide receivers whatsoever. Mm-hmm. Let's take another running back. Good job, Bill. How'd that work out? Well, we won a yeah. Super Bowl, but we won a Super Bowl because of White, <laughs> not because of Sony. Anyway, well, well, wasn't the the knock on Sony is um his his uh, fumbling and and his ball can you know his his ability to hang on to the the football? Yeah, and... he he had a little bit of that problem. 
He also was coming off an injury. Like, he also right. got hurt. What has he done in the Patriots? He's kind of been hurt a lot, not, mm-hmm. not always dependable. My question marks. So, let me tell you, because two of these question marks are undoubtable stars, I think. But their availability takes them out. Saquon sure. Barkley. Yeah. And, well, I mean, I don't know that he's a star. He's been a great running back when he's healthy. But if yep. he gets hurt again and he never plays again, that's that's a bust. Probably me, a bro. bust. Like, yeah. hey, this is why you don't take running backs. Number two overall, Dave Gettleman, dumbass. <laughs> and the other guy, same vein. I think Derwin James is probably one of the best secondary guys in the league. I think he has potential to be the best safety in football. This guy has played less than like nine games in three mm-hmm. years. I, I don't know what to do with that. I, I I know when he's healthy, he's he is dangerous, and he changes the way a defense looks. Mm-hmm. But he's just never there. And yeah. I can't put you in a bust yet, but, man, at some point in time, you got to get on the field if you want to not be that bust guy. Then my third question mark is is strictly his ability. DJ Moore has shown flashes of being a great wide receiver. DJ Moore has shown he's, he's completely disappeared in games. He is the ultimate. What are you? Because I don't know what you are yet. Okay, that's fair. I had so I had more as star but I, that was me focusing more on like that he's, dude's been he a, does start a, he's all a, the he's time a bona fide starter he's, he's a number a, one receiver that's right for he is that. a decent team but he's not um, julio jones nope like no, he's, he's not he's not um, like there's not a db in the league like defenses aren't looking out and saying man we got to go against dj more this week we've got to solve this yeah. problem before we leave this room thursday well, you know what i'm saying well, Calvin Ridley got drafted three spots later than him and i think calvin ridley is a Way bona fide better. yeah unquestionable star right no, um, no, no question so yeah, I, more I'm with you. I like there's some weirdness with you know the way Cam fell off a cliff there two years ago. 2020 is just a hard year for me, honestly. Yep. To, like which which makes this evaluation a little bit trickier. If that's if the thing Sam with Derwin Darnold James, and right? DJ Moore take two huge steps, I, I can move Sam out of the bus to a question. Mm-hmm. I can move mm-hmm. Moore to a star. But just right now, nobody just seems to be afraid of him. I, I, I every year in fantasy, I buy into the hype. I get him. And just <laughs> piss me. Off. Maybe there's a little sour grapes there. Yeah. Um. Well, with with Bar- and with Barkley, I, I same thing. I like if Barkley yeah. comes back and plays 14 games this next year, he's fine. I like he's he's really good. He's um. How I good mean, does use a the- running back and taken in the top four have to be to to be a star though? Because the best running back in this draft got taken in the second round by my Cleveland Browns, Nick Chubb. <laughs> yep. Yep. Which, which that, I mean, that why really are we stinks. spending first round draft picks on these guys when everybody that goes behind them in the second round, a is cheaper and B is better. That really stings the Sony Michelle pick too. Yeah. Um, but so here's a question like, uh, this is a 2016 guy, but Ezekiel Elliott, is he a star? Well, so in let's your, get in to your 16 rating? because we've already been there. Yes, Zeke is a star. He got the second contract. He got a massive contract. The difference is, is I still think it's a bad pick. Like, <laughs> like in three years, I might be looking at Mac Jones, and Mac Jones has made the playoffs two out of the three years and leads, you know, he's a top five quarterback because he got taken by the 49ers, and that's what Kyle Shanahan does. And and, and I'm still going to think the pick is wrong, but, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Zeke, I tell you what makes that Ezekiel Elliott pick at number four overall a hell of a lot better is that the Cowboys are awesome because they got Dak Prescott in the fourth round That's that right. same year, right? That's right. That that helps uh, that helps so much. Let's let's go on and move over to the 2016 because we sure. got to roll. We got to roll. Um Wentz and Goff. You got a both as bust? Uh Goff is a question mark for me. I actually have Goff as a question mark too. Yeah. I like he he got the huge contract. Obviously, there was a falling out in LA last year. I don't like if Goff were a 2018 guy, it'd be the same conversation we were having earlier about Baker, right? Like he's he could be your QB. I mean, he went to the Super Bowl. That's the, the Rams that's were the reason contenders for three years. The reason he's a question mark is because he went to the damn Super Bowl, man, and that's just not a fluke. Mm-hmm. And and could have two other years, right? I mean, they were right there in the mix, well, and and like you know ahead. he. He has an opportunity with Detroit. They they could draft a QB and like 
I think I think if they draft a QB and he doesn't play again, like he's probably a yeah bust. I, I agree with but, that. Oh, I do. I definitely agree with that. But at this stage, it seems like he's done at least what you would have expected him out of him in that number one spot. So my other thing with him is not just that he made it to a Super Bowl because Trent Dilfer made it to and won a Super Bowl. Like <laughs> bad quarterbacks have done that in the past, but, but you can't call those bust. They they did what they were supposed to, do, I guess. He also did it while putting up a couple of those years that he didn't make it, he put up hellacious numbers. Yeah. Like that offense, when it rolled, holy shit, it rolled. And mm-hmm. I, I do believe it's a product of a system, but I also fully understand that he was able to run that system well. I yeah. would not – this is Mac Jones to me, okay? I would not have taken him. I do not think he is a very good quarterback. But I think under a capable, competent mind – surround it with talent loads of talent he's gonna look good he's going to follow the playbook he's going to follow the reads and he's going to do what you ask him to do i love that um there's also no deandre hopkins in that offense oh yeah there's no julio jones in that offense like he's doing it with second round wide receiver talent or below that's true that's true that's 100 percent true um so i'm gonna roll through some of the busts i definitely have wince as a bust I, yep. I I do not buy into the 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 thing that the Colts are going to fix him because Frank Wright got him and whatever. I but I've lost a lot of respect for him when when he lost his job and he started pouting and was like I won't play anymore and I'm holding out until you trade me. Like dude, you got beat. Okay, you got beat by another guy and now you're going to pout about it. No, you're supposed to be a competitor. I don't want anybody on a football team that's not a competitor. Uh, I I'll, I don't even need to get to there. Like he. He also kind of went to a Super Bowl like Goff, but I don't think it had anything to do with him. I think he got really lucky on third down a lot that year, and he's never repeated. Well, he's never come close to the numbers that Goff has put up. Here's the thing he went down, Nick Foles came in, and the offense looked at the exact same. And it was, yeah. So that, so that tells me, that tells me that that you were nothing special with that. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. behind him, here's some other busts we got Corey Coleman, Titans. Yep. Looked terrible. Josh Donaldson, I think, is a bust with Washington. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. This one hurts a little. Your boy La- 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 Laquan Treadwell. But we we didn't we didn't talk about Mike Hughes in the 2018 draft, but also yeah, a bust. Also Vikings a bust. not not good, not good at drafting. Yeah, I I think Mike Zimmer and Bill Belichick are a lot alike. And when I watch their draft, I think, man, they really are a lot alike. These guys just. You're talking about a draft that only had like four or five busts and the Patriots took two of them and the Vikings took one. Like, wh- mm-hmm. what are we doing, you know? <laughs> Jesus. Because um, that draft was loaded with stars. And if you picked one of the busts, that's shame on you. Yep. Um, Paxton Lynch, all-time huge bust. No question. Passive. Just, just, just couldn't do it. And this is a guy that I was close to as well. Robert Kendichi. Yeah. Man, yeah, coming yeah. out of Ole Miss – there were people in the SEC that thought this guy is the second coming of Reggie White, man. Mm-hmm. Like he, we, we've never seen somebody this big, this strong, this fast. I don't know if drugs messed him up. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if he just didn't have the heart to want to work. I don't know what it was, but that guy, I, and I'm not even like the biggest old Miss guy, but I watched him. He was always a problem you had to solve. He is a wrecking ball, and he just did not make it in the NFL. Yep, I thought it was yep. weird. What? It, 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 it is weird. And I, I mean, the off the field stuff certainly seems to have been a factor. You know, he went to a team in Arizona. We just talked about it a minute ago, like that, you know, that squad has not been like steady or solid uh, in, in most of these past five years. And what's interesting is, you know, at, at the, by the same token, you've got Larry Tunsil also coming out of Ole Miss that year with the whole gas mask fiasco, like, Half well, I think hour before I the have draft, Laramie as a star, he's a total star. He's Absolutely. probably one of the like literally. You've got Bosa, uh, Jalen Ramsey, Laramie Tunstall. Those are the three best players that came out of this draft in the first round. So yeah. as opposed to 2018, where there's a shitload of stars. Mm-hmm. I mean, my stars mm-hmm. list was long. 2016, yep. I got I got three, and I'm giving Zeke one because he got the extra contract. Four. That's kind of it, man. Yeah. No, no, Ronnie Stanley. Well, I mean, okay. I, there's a bunch of guys I didn't put on the list. I didn't grade, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't. I couldn't resist. I grade everybody. Yeah, yeah. But like, I mean, what what really ahead. stands out to me in this in this draft, and this has come up a lot in the prep for for this 2021 year, is the wide receivers. Yep. And so you have Will Fuller, who 
I would I would put as a star, but maybe maybe so not. I but. have him as a question mark. I have him as a okay. question mark because I think he injuries. could be a star, but injuries, and then also yeah. you know you get caught with the roids. How much of this was manufactured? Now that That's you're fair. about to be tested all the time, we'll see. But then the other three wide receivers, Coleman, Dotson, and Treadwell, total total bust. Like barely even played. Two of them are out of football out entirely, of football completely. And then look at the second round. Look at the oh. second round. Maybe Kills the best me. football uh, uh, receiver in all of football in in Michael Thomas, mm-hmm. Tyler Boyd, who I think is an absolute mm-hmm. blossoming star, and then running back. This is why you don't take those guys mm-hmm. early. The biggest monster we may have ever seen at running back in the history of football in Derrick Henry. Yep. Let me let me tell you about rounds three through seven in this draft. Okay. Uh, Carl Nassib goes in the third round to Cleveland. Yep. Malik Callen, Collins in the third round to Dallas. Austin Hooper. In the four, in the third to Atlanta, uh, Jacoby Brissett, uh, Tyler Higby, Dak Prescott. We already talked about. Yeah, Dak, uh, huge in this round. D- Dean Lowry from Northwestern, still starting on the Green Bay defensive line uh, five years later. Tyreek Hill in the fifth round. I mean, this the, Jalen Mills in the seventh round to Philadelphia. He's been a five-year starter at safety, picked middle of the seventh round. I mean, this draft was a catastrophe. Listen to the QBs that went between. <laughs> Goff and Wentz. I guess Lynch, Lynch was in the third round, in first Lynch, round as well, Lynch right? Was first round guy. So you've got Hackenberg, Rough. Jacoby Brissett, who like definitely not, you know, not a had, star had, by any means, but he was yeah. he was drafted to be a backup, and he's been a very yeah. good backup. Had, had a couple of coffee, cups of coffee, right? Uh, Cody Kessler, Connor Cook, yikes! Then you get <laughs> Prescott. Um, just a the like, golden goose. I, just fall. This this draft is so interesting to look back on because of how terrible it was. And even with my like soft grading system, I still had like ten percent more uh, stars in 2018 than in this in this draft. Yeah, it's, it's, just, a it's, it's a mess. Yeah, yeah, not not even close. Um, I wonder is that an evolution? And some of these years, because next year I'll do you know 2019 and 2017. But like, is it a progression of College football is getting better, and so every year they're just we're getting better at this. Or if NFL scouts are getting better, you know we're just having less bust the more we go. Yeah. I don't I don't know. I I think they but I also more... wonder what are these twenty eighteen guys going to look like in two years? Yeah, yeah, and, and 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 that did jump off the page to me though because most of these twenty eighteen guys I had as stars have been perennial starters for three years and you didn't see that in 20 20 no. 16 well because most of them didn't start until mm-hmm. your second or third year and that was yep. it and so, so by think, the third I, year draft you know you're just trying to see are you getting on the field yeah so i think you have a lot of guys starting sooner i think you have more scheme similarity between the two leagues i think you've seen more coaches bounce back and forth you know a little bit less retreading of of terrible old busted coaches in the nfl yeah. and a little bit more experimentation but um but yeah your your point is spot on that the 2018 guys there's still two more years to see what happens there yep all right let's move into something else we're gonna still talk draft stuff we're gonna get a little personal and then we're gonna get out of here okay if you my boy eric scuzz scousbo if you were an nfl first round guaranteed prospect all right maybe not first overall but you're going day one where do you spend the draft and who do you spend it with so I'm I'm a big experience guy. Okay. I, I think experiences are a lot of fun. I would one million percent be at the draft live. I don't care if I have to wear a mask or be in a bubble suit or what, I would be there. Even if I were not a guaranteed first round guy, I'd want to experience that for myself. Um I'd probably try to have some fun with it if all of a sudden I'm on the camera every other pick with oh he, he keeps falling, right? That's right? Um give a couple of uh Jim Halpert looks from the office. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'd want my kids there. I'd want my wife there uh, again, just for the, the the fun of it, to enjoy it, to soak in that atmosphere, um, to boo Roger Goodell from, from backstage. Like, I, like I want all of that. Who All right, So let's pretend you're in college. You don't have your wife. You don't have your kids, oh. but I would, I'm going to make this a little more difficult. You're with your, your current wife. She's just not your wife. Okay. All right. Who's with you at the table. Is she with you? And how long do you have to be together? Because this is going to be something that's going to live forever. Mm-hmm. And do you just want a girlfriend that you've been dating for a couple of months to be in this shot? It, it, it would have to be pretty serious. It how would have serious to, like, does it have to be for you to get invited to, to her to get invited to this? 
so i mean i was an idiot when i was 22 me let's too. be clear me, uh, let's, so let's, uh, me too <laughs> um so like choices that i might have made then were you know I'm, I'm much more informed now i would like to think that unless i was seriously contemplating buying a ring with my signing bonus that um that like that's the that's the that's the threshold like I mean, maybe if I'd been with somebody for like five years, you know, she'd been with me through my entire college career or something like that. Yeah. Like I could, I could see that, but, um, so a couple I, of I, years I, in pretty serious, you're okay with the invite. Yeah. But otherwise it'd be, it'd be Sam. It'd be John, oh, it's a boy. It's uh, okay. my, my, I like my, that. my boys from college, right? Like I'd, I'd want them there to be there to experience it with me. There you go. There you go. I, I think about that all the time. I'm with you. I would go to the draft if it was me. You know, I respect, I like the Joe Thomas, like, hey, I like to fish with my dad. And so I know once I start in the NFL, it's work time and not a whole lot of fishing time. And so I'm going to go fishing with my dad. And he answers his flip phone when the Browns call him. And he says, all right, <laughs> thanks. And he hangs up and he keeps fishing. And and I, I respect that. Man, I, that, I, I'm with you. I, I like the party. I want to be there. I want to mm-hmm, experience mm-hmm. it. I want to see the lights. I want to see the glamour. I, you know, I want to see this thing that I have accomplished. And I want to, I want to kind of, you know, I like the world being around me at my table. Probably would not have a significant other. I'd have to be honest. Um, I, I, I just, you know, I, I don't know. It, those things live forever. And I, I used to always think about those things like, man, you know, who would I want? And it would probably have been my friends. You know, it, it had been yeah. my mom. Um, you know, we, we weren't even really close, at, but, but she's all I had, you know, the consistency there. Um, and, and, you know, it, had, you know, probably been a couple of, a couple of buddies and stuff, but that would have been it. I, I, there's no, I, I can't even imagine being like engaged at 22. So I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't think, cause I damn sure wasn't ready for that. I don't think I would have had a girlfriend that I was close enough to bring with them. I bring the girlfriend part of it up because I think the videos are really funny. Oh my like, God. Like yeah. last year, yeah. the CD lamb video, no, of, see. he gets the call. <laughs> he's got two phones. Hey, hey, they got two phones. Why do they have two phones? Well, they give the NFL one phone. All right. Because we've seen from what Roger Goodell likes to do. If you get in trouble, you got to turn your phone in. So you got an NFL, you got a work phone. Then you got your personal phone, right? Mm-hmm. He's on the work phone with the Cowboys talking to Jerry Jones on his yacht and his girlfriend on TV just reaches over and casually picks it up and takes his other phone. That man does not, miss a beat he does not miss a second he reaches back snatches that phone back puts it in his pocket and then keeps this conversation going i would have given anything to be a part of the conversation that happened next i will tell you that there wouldn't have been much of one i would have given a look to one of my buddies and somebody would have walked over would have gladly taken her by the hand and walked her to the front door and showed her on her way that that would have happened that second, that day, it would have been, it would have been that quick. You got marched up, you got marched out, and you're gone. Um, what, what, what's the other one that we the were talking Isaiah about? Wilson's Isaiah Wilson. Isaiah Wilson. Yeah, that's he's, the best. He's crying. He's crying. He pulls his hat down. He's got the Eagles drafting. Pulls his hat down. He's crying. His girlfriend wraps all like around him. Bear hugs and him. And she's just holding it on to him. And she's just thinking, I just got paid, baby. And I'm talking. <laughs> A few seconds later, Mama reaches over and snatches her little ass out of there so she can hug her baby. That's the one thing. You don't want that to live forever. You yep, don't yep. want to look back on your draft, and, and especially if it was just a casual relationship mm-hmm, or a girlfriend mm-hmm. and it wasn't real serious, and that person be there forever now. Like, you know your no matter what you go, you know your mama's going to be there. Just yep, stand yep. by your mama and let it's, her be there with you. It's funny because you mentioned that video to me and I watched it and so I was funny. expecting like, so funny. I was expecting mom to sit down in the nope. frame and to her credit, she doesn't. She's like, no, 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 no. This is just about him. This is about you, like, him. And the girl yeah. made it about her and mama snatched her ass out. I was, <laughs> yes, she a, did. That's a good yes, mama right there. That is a you know good what? mama. You know, what's funny until you said it, I didn't even think about having my parents at the draft with me, which no. I almost certainly would have done. They just don't care anything about football. Oh, so no, no, like, no. like, like, of course, if I was, you know, plan like ha- say I say that had I had I ever been anything good, my mom would have never cared about football. I remember she, but she would have been she would have been there every minute of it. Uh, she have came to the draft. No, she wouldn't have been there every minute for the. Oh, game. okay. Growing up, she never came to a game of mine. <laughs> she came to one game. It snowed or it rained. We don't get a lot of snow in November. It rained, and she 
sat in her car, which you can't see the field from the parking lot, the way the stadium was set up. And I got out and she was in the car, totally dry, just sitting there with it running when I got out. And I was like, I'm sorry you had to sit in the rain. And she just looked at me and she was like, I didn't sit in the rain. I was here. I was like, you came, but you didn't watch me. And she was like, no, I wasn't going to sit in the rain. And I was like, and that's, and that's it. That's the list of her ever coming to a football game. But she did raise me. She did keep me alive yeah, throughout yeah, all of yeah. these years. And, and so, you know, she did what she thought was right as a mom, which is all you could ever ask. She did the best she could. And, uh, and so, yeah, I never went hungry and never went without. And, and that thanks to her, she would have, she would have had to have been there. Other than that, it would have pretty much been some buddies of mine, but yeah, uh, that's, that's a, that's a, that's an interesting thing. The Isaiah Wilson is my favorite. It really is. It's so good. She just snatches them out. Um, all right. So let's get to your Vikings. Mm -hmm. All right. Your Vikings have a history. We looked at two drafts. They busted both picks. Okay. We're not going to bust this year, baby. They damn sure didn't bust last year. They did not. Number fifth they wide receiver the overall taken. They have the best wide receiver in the draft. And I, did you watch the, 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 the tweet that I sent you yesterday yes. Yes. where their front office is laughing when the Eagles take Jalen Rieger? They were like, oh, my God, they didn't they take believe Justin. It. Get Justin on the phone. Get him on the phone now. Yeah, it's so awesome. I mean, I mean, J Justin, we've talked about this a lot over the because we both have a lot of love for Randy Moss. That's right. And Justin Jefferson comes in and is setting records like Randy Moss. I mean, not it. it We're not, it's not exactly comparable that for a career yeah. path, but what he's done his rookie year is unbelievable. No one thought he would fill the shoes of Stefan yeah. Diggs. Now you damn sure don't want to lose a Stefan Diggs. But man, has he filled the shoes of anybody that was supposed to be standing in that spot? He's been spectacular. So um, this year, absolutely spectacular. All right, what do you? So, you're the GM. What do you want? I got two questions. What do you want to happen? Who would you take with your pick? So what I what I think the Vikings have two cl crystal clear needs um, beyond quarterback. We're just we're just gonna let that go. Like if by some miracle, I think it was in the Sports Illustrated mock draft. Justin Fields was still available at 14. And, well, yeah, because uh, a lot uh, of people have him going to the Patriots at 15. A yeah, so Will, Will, Will Raggett's the the um, Vikes beat writer, was like, well, I'll just pick Justin Fields then. <laughs> Which, like, yes, um, do that. But in reality, I, we need we need offensive line. We need tackles. Um, we let both it's of ours go. It's a good tackle draft. It's a good tackle draft. Um, I don't think he'll be still be there at 14. I actually think the Vikings should consider trading up to get Rashawn Slater. I do, too. That is what that. I would do. I know, like, I know, that, I know that's, I know that's the Homer pick. Mm -hmm. I think, I think Slater and Sewell are 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 almost interchangeable. Yeah, Slater's I, everything I, I, I want in a, in, a, in in an offensive lineman. I think Sewell is going somewhere in the top seven or eight. I don't think that it makes sense to trade up that high when there's going to be another guy who's right there, a one B to the one A. You're right. Whichever one of them it is, trade up to ten, trade up to nine, go get them. I yeah. like that's what I think they should do. Um, what do you think I they will do? I don't think they will trade up. I think if anything, they trade back. I like like if, if one of those players doesn't fall to them, this has been a Zimmer thing for years. They're happy to trade back. I'm happy for them to do it. Edge is the other critical need they have. It's not a good class this for defense. This is an awful events. edge class. Yeah. Like if an edge rusher comes out of this class being a star, I'll, I'll be shocked. I'll be yeah. shocked. I mean, I, I, I also don't, don't see a Joey Bosa in this class. I don't see a, yeah. a, a Miles Garrett, a Nick Chubb in this class. Nope. And I don't, I don't see a lot of um, uh, high impact safeties either, which would be maybe another spot that like, like Zimmer's defense is so reliant on a high impact safety. And if, you know, if one of those two guys that we have goes down, you have problems. They've shored up cornerback immensely through uh, free agency with Mackenzie Alexander and Patrick Peterson. So I like, well, and that's how I like to do it, by the way, Gary and I've mm -hmm. talked about that. Unbelievably. I don't know how to grade college corners because Unless you play in the SEC, and I know this is going to sound as like the SEC bias, but unless you play in the SEC, you're not going against great world-class receivers week in and week out. How, so you shut everybody down. How good were the guys that you shut down? How good are those offenses? And it's, it's, it's the only knock. It's the only knock I have on your boy Greg Newsom, I, yeah. which I still think he's a top three corner, by the way. It doesn't yeah. matter. But – when have we ever seen him go against the best wide receiver in football? Because the Big Ten is just not 
offense. It, it's not running the Big 12, the SEC, even the high-powered ACC and Pac-12 offenses. They're just not. Yeah. And, and those, I mean, you know, it's different style of football. He's been great at everything he's been asked to do. I trust him. But that's the question mark. That's the knock. Yeah. And, I mean, does it does it help that his backups uh, shut down Auburn? Uh, <laughs> it probably doesn't help him a lot. At all. <laughs> no, not a lot. No, I, I, uh, here, here's what I'll say about Newsom, and this is what I think is so interesting about him. Who, like, all three of us are like, we ride hard for Greg Newsom. That's right. The, the he debuted in 2018 uh, on the road at Purdue. A week before that game, John Lacombe said. My like dark horse player of the year, the guy that could be an X factor and take this Northwestern defense from here to here is Greg Newsom. If he sees the field, he's going to play. He's going to be amazing. And then like it all, it all came to fruition. The thing about Newsom that I think is really exciting about him is the traits he demonstrates allow him to fit into a lot of different schemes. Yes. And, and your comment about the sec and like going mono a mano with a big time receiver, like a Kyle Pitts or otherwise, that's super critical in press man schemes. If you're playing more of a three deep, you know, matchup or, or quarters, which is what Northwestern generally does, it's much more about your reaction time, your ability to tackle. Greg Newsom is balls to the wall awesome in those categories. And that's why I think whether or not he he can go one on one with a Kyle Pitts or Julio Jones, I'm not as worried about that. That's right. Because I think he's going to get picked up by a team that is looking to use him more versatile. I agree. I completely agree with that, and and I I love him. I still think he's going to go in the first round. I'm I'm married to that pick because we've just seen corner. I don't know how to draft them and evaluate them, but these people that do this for a living do, and we're seeing more and more cornerbacks taken. You're telling me three or four cornerbacks aren't going to be taken. He's not the fifth or sixth cornerback yeah. that's going to fall. Yeah, yeah. And so I just think as wide receiver becomes more prevalent. So does cornerback, and and I think he's going to go. I think he's going to go. I wouldn't hate it if he went to Cleveland, um, because <laughs> because they've they we got a lot of secondary and DB guys there, but a lot of them have had injury issues, and I think the more you can rotate guys in, the better it is. So that's that, man. I appreciate you jumping on with me. Thank you so so much. Check us out. Check these guys out. Westlight Pirates. You can follow Scuzz, um, man. I'm excited about Thursday. It's going to be awesome. I, I can't wait. Uh, our live draft pal, draft pod is um, unhinged. As, uh, as John has said, we, we just, we just have a lot of fun with it and uh, there's bound to be some, some wild things, you know? Um, I want somebody, this draft to be unpredictable. I really do want Kyle Shanahan to show up and take Kyle Pitts. Like that's what <laughs> I want because it'd be if, incredible because if that ha- hey, I think that's the best pick he can make. But if that happens, it throws everybody's mock draft of what they think is going to happen in the garbage. And now this draft is fun. Now we just we just set off a landmine and let's yep. see what scatters, baby. It's going to be awesome. So that's what I, I want. I totally agree. I think that would be a lot of fun. I, I like sim- similarly though, if he picks Mac Jones at that spot, I mean the ten teams behind him are licking their chops because. Yeah, like I just all, know all of a sudden there's going to be a success there, and it's going to piss eh, me off. Maybe, maybe. I think we'll be having this conversation in three years, and wherever Mac Jones goes, at best, question mark. <laughs> wow, I just I, maybe I respect Kyle too much. I just think he's that good of an offensive mind. All right, thank you guys. Appreciate y'all joining us, and uh, we're gonna get out of here. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.